Okay, let's get started, y'all. First off, I have one cup of yellow corn meal with nothing added. I'm going to tell you right now, it might take you a little while, especially if you're gluten-free, GF, uh, to find a cornmeal with no added flour. Because when you go to Walmart, it will be cornmeal after cornmeal with the flour. You have got to check. So this is just one cup yellow cornmeal. You can get Bob's Red Mill, whatever. You can get Walmart brand, whatever. Just make sure it's that if you're going gluten-free and if you're making this recipe, period. Because if you go on and get that, it just won't work because you're going to be adding to it. So let's do that. I'm going to be bringing in my all-purpose flour that I've gotten. Actually, Walmart has stepped up and done their own gluten-free. We have tested it out with many recipes, and i got to be honest, i got to stand by it. And I know a lot of people, they get upset about Walmart, big corporations, all this. Hey, I'm in, I'm in Mississippi, y'all. I got to shop where I can shop. I'm shopping at Walmart, y'all. Okay, so that is the Walmart gluten-free all-purpose flour. You can use that in place in a lot of recipes. You know, you just have to navigate yourself. Okay, now, next. Well, I should probably put that in, don't you think? Let me get my whisk. And my whisk is my favorite whisk, which is by the Pioneer Woman. She does not pay me to say that. Trust me, the Pioneer Woman is not paying anybody except herself to say what she likes. But I have to tell you what, I like what she likes. I do. This right here, yes. And we're going to put product details as well. Okay, so got that. Moving on to sugar. Now, because, like, you know, we're living twisty, you know, I need to show y'all. This is the pure organ um, organic stevia. It's a blend. It's a granular all-purpose sweetener. I love it. I use it in many recipes. You can use it in coffee. It, it looks like sugar, but it's not going to make your body react like it. So we need that, definitely. So that's going in. So, so far I have one cup of yellow cornmeal. I have one half cup of all-purpose flour. I have four tablespoons, which is basically a fourth of a cup, let's be honest, of that sugar substitute, which you can use regular sugar, organic sugar, whatever. The R twist, our twisty twist is this. And like I said, product details. Next is going to be our pink Himalayan salt. We've done our research, we think pink Himalayan is better. So that's what we're going with, and that is one teaspoon of salt. And like I said, this recipe is going to be down below. And if you have any questions about this recipe, please do not hesitate to ask them. And of course, hit thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share, um, any reaction, any questions. Okay, next. Let me get this out of the way. Next. I'm going to be bringing in my baking powder. I'm going to get baking soda later, but baking powder. Right here, Rumford baking powder. No aluminum. Do you, do you people really know this? They do put aluminum in things. It's in our deodorant, and it can be in your baking powder. If it does not say no aluminum, you are eating, I don't know, what's it called? Foil. You're eating foil. Don't. Don't do it. So right here, Rumford, we've used it my entire life. And look at that, non-GMO. Non-GMO. You know what? Leave a tomato a tomato. Come on, Monsanto. Come on. All right. So this is actually one tablespoon of baking powder, Rumford, like I said, aluminum-free, non-GMO. And here we go. I'm going to bring in my um, baking soda next. And, well, you can get your own arm and hammer, your own whatever, but it's going to be a half a teaspoon of that baking soda. Now, you might be thinking, that's a lot of baking powder, a lot of baking soda, but the fact is, this is chemistry. And I'll be showing you a little bit as I further go down the line, but we are baking, and baking is chemistry. You have got to accurately measure whether you, you take it, scrape it off with a butter knife, however you do it, weigh it. However you have to do it correctly, do it correctly, because trust me, baking will bite you in the butt if you don't do it correctly because it is chemistry, but it's fun. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a fourth a cup of shortening, and the kind that we like is this Spectrum Organic Non-Hydronated All Vegetable Shortening. So this is mostly basically palm, you know, it has all the good stuff, 
You want to see any pond? There's happy animals. People are happy. Yeah. Spectrum Organic All Veggie Shortening. Get that stuff. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in. And you know what? I'm going to grab two forks. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I have two forks, but I also brought out my pastry cutter. Okay. Bear with me. I have this. I have my, yes, I know it's aerosol. I know, I know, I know. But it's Pam. It's coconut. I'm doing what I can right now so I can afford better. This is what I'm doing. And how I do it is I just give it a couple squirts. I stick it in. You can scoop. You can do however you do. But make sure, try to be as accurate, even if you have to use just that little bit. And actually, my hands, I did wash them in very hot, hot water. I have asbestos hands. I say this in all my videos, asbestos hands. Yes, that's what happens when you've been hanging around in the kitchen since you were four. So, I have it close right here, but I'm going to take this little thing because I'm going to use it twice just to make sure. I am that crazy girl when it comes to baking. You see that? Yep, I will not put that in just because, like I said, baking is chemistry. It's not quite like regular cooking. So now I'm going to use this, scoop it out, bam, see, must have fall out. So there we go. And only one chunk. So there we go. I'm going to set this to the side. Once again, that was my Spectrum Organic Shortening. Now. You can use two forks to cut it in. You could use your whisk to try to do that. Let me tell you what, that's, you're not going to get anywhere, even if you use one of these suckers. And trust me, I haven't given up on this. I love this whisk. But, and I love this whisk, but it's not going to do it for you. So, I'm going to show you. You can take this if you do not have a pastry cutter. Just because you don't have this fancy doohickey doesn't mean you have to go out and get it if you can't afford it. Use two forks. So, before I use that, let me show you how. Just take it, put your two fingers, go down like this. Because what you're really going to do is try to get all this PC. Almost like you're making any kind of biscuit or whatever. Um, what you're trying to do is just cut the shortening into the flour so it's in little pea bits. So you can continue to do that. Or you can do what I'm going to do. And this is purpose. Ugh. This really jacks, jacks with my measurements. And I'm not OCD girl, but baking is chemistry. Okay, so, or you can have this fancy dooley hick. Or if all fails, because this is not a biscuit or a pie dough, you can use your clean, dry hands to piece it up just like that. Tell you what, even Julia Child will tell you, the two hands God gave you, are your best cooking tools. So if you have to get down to it, this is how good this cornbread is. And now I also want to tell you something about the sugar aspect. If I was making chili, I'm not going to give you sugary cornbread because I'm not that girl. I'm from the South and that's not what we do. Okay, y'all? We do things differently. Now, when I'm making this, I'm making this for my cornbread dressing. That's why I'm using sugar because it helps give it another layer of flavor in the cornbread dressing. And when we're done baking this, that is what it's going to be turned into. Okay, so we've done this right here. I, of course, have gotten my hands, well, oh, well, you know, wonky right now. But I'm going to set this to the side because I really don't need to clean my hands to show you this next step. Okay, I have just brought, I've gotten just regular Kroger brand whole vitamin D milk. You can use whatever milk you want. I am not going to say that you can replace this and put almond milk and expect the same results because no. This is a chemistry experiment. It's fun. Really, it's buttermilk cornbread. But guess what? I'm not going to go out there and buy even a half a pint of buttermilk and waste that money for one tablespoon. No, or for the, I'm just not. Okay, so what I do is I take one tablespoon of your great grandma, because come on, the generations are growing, so we're going to say great grandma's white vinegar distilled white vinegar don't get fancy don't get fancy get the Heinz distilled white vinegar if you don't know what I'm talking about think of your old grandma's kitchen and you'll know what I'm talking about 
use that. It's one tablespoon to one cup of milk. And I prefer the whole D because it has more protein and it's richer. It's, trust me, because you don't want to drink this. You would never put this together and then drink it like buttermilk. But here we go. One tablespoon into that. I'm going to give it a sturdy stir. And when we come back in five minutes, this will have gelled up in some way. Okay, y'all. It's five minutes later. And it has somewhat, I don't know, gelled, congealed. I don't know. It's turned into this buttermilky type of thing. I would not drink it, but it is actually going to be perfect in this cornbread. And i got to be honest, if you put this in this, go ahead and taste it, but you'll hate it. But when you put it in the oven and it comes out, it is freaking amazing. So, what we're going to do is, actually, before I add it to the cornmeal, I need to add one-fourth quarter more milk to this. So it's going to be in total one and one quarters. That's that's one cup and a fourth of a cup. I don't know how to make it any simpler than that. So I have it, I had it up to two and I eyeballed it down low. I'm going to do the same. And I'm actually going to just top that red line because adding that vinegar did make it expand a little. So you got to add just a little bit over that line. And I do encourage you, get down, look at it straight on. It's like shooting pool. If you don't know how to shoot pool, you can't be up here. you got to be down here, you know? Okay, so remember that. Same thing. Here we go. This is one and a quarter cup milk that we've turned into buttermilk using our tablespoon of white distilled vinegar and now we're just gonna mix this up I mean this we're done we're doing the science we're doing the chemistry experiment because all of this is going to combine together to fluff up this cornbread and cook in 20 minutes and it's perfect because what we're ultimately going to do I have this one particular bowl or um, my particular casserole casserole wear thing um, that I'm using and a little bit more of that coconut pan and I'm just going to pour this right on in scrape 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 do its thing and I'm putting this in a preheated 3 750 degree oven that is Fahrenheit American maybe or I don't know we seem to never do anything like the rest of the world I know they all do Celsius but 375 degrees preheated. Now, I'm going to put this to the side, and I'm going to put this in the oven, and I'm going to put it in there for 20 minutes, and when you see it next, it's going to be baked and lovely. Okay, y'all. So, 375. I put it in 20 minutes. Now, I know my oven. And, in fact, I did mine in my toaster oven. You can do your oven, whatever. Whatever it is. And this size, how it is, it puffs up nice. You can see how it cracked all that beautiful love. Look at the brown. It's all lovely. Yay! So what am I going to do? I can let it just sit here and cool, but I actually am going to turn it out onto my really old Silpet. That's why it's this color. Now, I don't know if Mom's going to agree with me, so we'll see here. I believe that Mother got this Silpet circa 1996 when we were living in Michigan on Meadow Lane that's, Avenue. That's close. That's clip. Mom says that's close, y'all. Hey. Okay. Sometimes we get in disputes, and I'll say I distinctly remember woman. But, yes. So that's why our Silpets look like this. If you buy yours, made in France, real Silpet, yours can last for 22 years. It's not. So, I don't know. How long is that? 1996? I don't even want to think about it. Moving on. So, basically, what I'm going to do is this. Because... I want the silk pat down. It is, in fact, down. I looked. I am going to do, like I said, keep your hands. I'm just doing this business right here. Bam. Here we go. So that was the only thing because I didn't, but I want this sucker to cool. Because really, ultimately, what this happening with this is that it's going to be turned into cornbread dressing so I need this sucker to cool 
I'm going to cut it up, cube it up. Some of it's going to be rubbed out and it's going to be dried out. Now, you can do it several ways. You can do it a day, two days ahead. Put it in, uh, you know, put a tea towel over it. Let it naturally dry out. Or you can cut it up. Well, first off, let it finish its business here. Cut it up in how you want it to cut up because it might crumble too much when it's hot. Then put it in a 200 degree oven and just let it sit for an hour or two hours so some of that moisture gets out and makes it a lot easier for your cornbread. Because you don't, you want good cornbread, but cornbread, I don't know. I've had people's cornbread where it was just mush. Like you didn't even need a tooth. Like it was just, ugh. So I like a little bit of texture to my cornbread, which you will see later on. So this is first easy cornbread, and that's going to be one video. And then when we cut back into another video, that's actually going to be the cornbread dressing video. But this is the cornbread. If you just want to keep it in here, you can keep the sugar if you want and get into that whole discussion if you want because it's just a nominal amount of sugar. And speaking of that, Mom actually wanted me to clarify two things. Number one, it is an erythritol and stevia blend. Organic stevia blend is what this pure is. And, as Mother calls, asinine, and yes, that is true, Walmart, you are asinine, and you know it. <laughs> we know you. We have to live in small towns and deal with you. So not all Walmarts carry their own brand, people. But it's true. Not all Walmarts carry their own brand. So, look for it, but it may not be in your Walmart. Sorry. Then what to say? Check Walmart.com. And also, y'all, because they're trying to... You know, if you have to buy something from Walmart, make them send it to you on their bus. You pick it up in the back of the store. They pay the shipping. That's how you get out of that. All right. So, cornbread is done. This is going to be the end of this video. And we're going to be doing cornbread dressing next. But you saw how beautiful it was in this gorgeous earthenware that Mother bought. Probably as old as me. And we're not going to talk about my age. We're not talking about my age. What I want to talk about is the age of this cornbread, and I am going to cut this up, and I'm going to do it the fast way, and when you see me next time, I'm going to be doing the cornbread dressing. All right, love y'all. Keep it twisty. Let's twisters. Twist it out. All right.